I can come in, you know, I can, I can kind of be that expert in the field to, to help your company kind of um, weather your squall, I say, to be super cheesy about it. That's <laughs> so it. Er, puns are intentional here on stream. Perfect. I do Perfect. not believe in no pun intended. That is nonsense. Perfect. Welcome to Stream, a truck tractor trailer.com production. My name is Zach Miller. I'm your host, and I'm honored today to be joined by uh, Lauren M. Began, who is the principal and founder of Squall Strategies, uh, maritime industry expert, and that would be a uh, maritime consulting company. Lauren, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Zach. Happy to be here. Happy to happy to have this conversation and, and connect with your your listeners. Yeah, absolutely. And so this is um, this is it. We're talking full on supply chain now. We have the the trucking side of it, and now uh, we're bringing in the maritime expert. But you know, it's on everyone's mind. I think the White House every other day is making some sort of announcement about initiatives to try to get the supply chain moving. So from where are your vantage point, what are you seeing? How how are things going right now? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think we're all kind of seeing the same thing. And and like you said, I'm approaching it from a maritime side of things. So, you know, I, I'm I'm I, I'm happy to have a conversation with the surface transport side because I think that we're all finding that we've become a little too siloed. Yes. Um, you know, and I, I think that we all need to kind of it, it, not by anybody's fault, we all speak kind of different languages. We all we all kind of use some of the same terms, but really the way that we apply them is a little bit different, and that causes trouble. Absolutely. You know what I think is, in terms of people being siloed, it's very frustrating because you, so many times you'll go, and you, you've been to a, thousands of these meetings, I've been to, to thousands of them, and you look around the table and you notice that not everyone is there who should be there. Mm. And then what happens is, so policy is starting to get discussed and crafted, and all of a sudden you're like, okay, but like these three huge stakeholders were not in any of these meetings, and like, that's probably going to cause some problems down the road. Right. Well, and you know, that happens on the maritime side too. So, you know, I mean, we're all familiar with Department of Transportation and they have an agency within the U.S. Department of Transportation. So that's Mayor Pete. He's Secretary Pete. He's the um, the Secretary of Transportation. Um, they have an agency, Maritime Administration, um, which is a great agency, but they tend to be a little bit more promotional of the U.S. flag fleet. So they tend to be a little bit more kind of domestically focused. We also have another agency called the Federal Maritime Commission, who is the agency that regulates kind of the, the monopolistic behavior that happens on ocean shipping. So they they protect for the US for the benefit of the US exporter, importer and consumer um, ocean borne shipments. And so when the alliance reshuffling was happening with the ocean carriers a few years, well, 10 years ago, I guess, um, they were overseeing that to making sure that nothing became too monopolistic, that no, no kind of alliance group had more than maybe 25, 30, 35 percent market share. Um, you know, so so they still allowed for big winners and big losers, but they provided kind of that guardrail. So that is a great agency that sometimes gets left out of the conversation just because it's not as well known. Um, I think now with everybody talking about supply chain, it's it's certainly becoming more <laughs> well known. Um, they're, they're creating a few federal advisory committees as part of the Federal Maritime Commission, which is a great way of just including the industry. And it's a little hands off on the FMC. They're like, here's a group, we're going to facilitate the discussion, but you guys discuss and let us know. You're just going to have direct access to the federal government should you come up with some solutions or identify problems that we're not looking at. So, you know, that, like you're saying, you want to make sure that everybody's at the table. And so federal advisory committees, same thing. You want to make sure you capture everybody, but also all the relevant regulatory agencies, you know, like. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's, it's so funny to hear that because I'm thinking, because I'm familiar with FMCSA, yep. uh, you know, not a hands-off agency. Right. <laughs> I just like the, like the way you're saying it's like they're hands-off. I'm like, wait, that that's a thing that happens in DOT. <laughs> well, and so that's the thing is, you know, so FMCSA is part of DOT, so that's going to be more of like a cabinet, you know, derivative of a cabinet level agency. So there's a secretary. It's very connected to the administration. The FMC is related is an independent regulatory agency, and so they stay on for five year terms, and so they get a little insulated from the really kind of heat and, heightened and heated politics 
Um, they're similar to STB, so tra Surface Transportation Board, okay. which is an independent regulatory agency of the surface side. So, um, you know, kind of, they're a little bit more trucking fo focus, or I'm um, sorry, rail focus, the STB. Yeah. But, you know, that that's, so like probably a lesser known, lesser understood agency. That's where FMC is equivalent. But it's so interesting, though, because I do feel like in, in, in general, so much of, of maritime is sort of insulated and hands up. I mean, the way the, the way that a lot of these port authorities are structured, um, there's not a whole lot of public transparency and there's not a whole lot of public accountability. Now, now that's not to say the, the port authorities are responsible for this supply chain crisis, but but it just goes to the, the themes of people. We don't know what's coming and going from our ports. And it's like, that's literally our economy. It's, it, it's a very strange situation the way we've designed this whole thing. Well, I mean, to, you know, kind of a snapshot to the beginning of the pandemic, you know, where we're all people didn't really they were kind of watching supply chain, but not as much. You know, they were talking about how PPE needed to get into the, mm -hmm. the super important hands of the healthcare workers. But nobody really kind of connected the dots that the PPE isn't made domestically. It's 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 made internationally. And so when they started creating the list of who was essential workers, maritime workers were left off the list like. You can't get your PPE that this is supposed to go to if you don't have maritime workers. So the ports themselves are creating, you know, platooning like team A, team B, team mm -hmm. C. So if one team went down, you still had workers. You know, we, it was a while, while, while. Everybody was just dealing with it as they could. But, you know, it was it was through kind of the the, the work of the American, um, the AAPA, American Association of Port Authorities, who really kind of said, hey, guys, don't forget, 90 percent of everything. And that includes PPE is mm -hmm. coming from ocean transit. Let's pretend like they matter. You know, let's let's make sure that we we make it a big deal that these maritime workers at the ports who are bringing that good in, um, you know, and then and then moving it into the surface transport side. It, you know, let's let's make sure that they're part of that conversation of essential. You know, and there's there, there are a couple of interesting points there. Um, because, and this is another thing that that you know the surface and, and, and maritime transportation have in common, is that for too long, we as a society have disrespected. And some cases even, um, you know, insulted those jobs. We discourage people from going into those types of jobs. They're great jobs and they're job. essential jobs. And it's just like, I feel like every, the last 30 years, it seems, all we've done is spend ways to build to this crisis that we're in right now. And a big part of it is how we don't highlight the jobs that we need to highlight. I mean, you know, and it's so true. I mean, I've... I've pretty much always said, like, let's treat highways as though there's somebody's office because they are, yes. you know, because they are, because somebody is driving that highway. It's not just how you get to where you're going, but you need to be respectful of those who work in this office. It's like, if you go, like, let's say that you were to go to Congress and look around and yes, it's the people's house, you know, you go to DC, but it's also somebody's office, you know? Mm -hmm. And so there's a little bit of like, there's kind of this respect for the office and the work that's being done. I mean, you know, as much as everybody respects Congress, but <laughs> you know, the, the low approval ratings or whatever, but you know, um, all that aside, but you know, let's, let's treat highways the same way. You know, this is somebody's office. There is somebody who has been, you know, away from their families for days, weeks, months, sometimes, you know, like let's treat this as though their job matters and that we can be respectful and, and helpful to help them because everything in the vehicle that you're driving pretty much came from a well it did come from a trucker at some point no absolutely and 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 of course you're preaching to the choir here but but that's some but that's something that even gets on my nerves too and and we're seeing this a lot uh, now at the federal level but but uh, certainly in the, these more urban areas where it's uh, oh let, let's rethink highways and let's try to get people away from car usage which i totally respect and understand car usage the problem is um the highways themselves really are freight networks like you say so it's like yeah listen I'm not going to sit here and defend somebody taking a Honda Civic on a highway, but I will sit here and defend the trucker taking all that freight and moving it on a highway. And, and people need to see the difference between the two of them. Exactly. And sometimes moving that Honda Civic, you know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like if, if the Civic is moving via truck, I'm cool with it. I'm going to push for him. But <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's crazy. I really, you know, it's, it's kind of like the, the old adage, like no news, no press is bad press. Like, mm -hmm. I think attention on this is going to bring some headache. Sure. Because now all of a sudden, you know, maybe there are going to be regulators that want to be kind of overly, overly active or whatever. And, and, you know, that, that's the whole point is it regulation is supposed to be for like kind of the framework of safety, you know, yes. let's make sure that it stays kind of in the safe 
safe world of like, you still want the big losers, the big winners, but you, you want to create kind of this guardrail. So let's, let's kind of keep it there. But then the attention that's going to be on the industry in general, maybe that's going to bring some of these, you know, Silicon Valley tech people, you know, you, you guys are, are kind of tech, you know, it's like, let's, let's create some of this digitization where we can, because we're, we're squeezing this lemon, we're squeezing it dry. We're, we're not going to get infrastructure in these ports or these highways right away. You mm -hmm. know, it's good to put money in it. That's always going to be a good, a good move. But like, it's not going to happen overnight. You're not going to snap your finger and just have like better highways and better ports. So like in the meantime, let's figure out efficiencies where we can. And I think, you know, some of that, like, let's just digitize it is going to be helpful. It's, you know, it's, it's like switching from snail mail to email. We were all a little reluctant, you know, when we first hit email, it was like, who am I going to send the email to? <laughs> but now it's like, well, you can't even imagine a world where you don't have email and it's instantaneous. No, I, I mean, I still talk to people who, who are on their flip phones and I'm just like, what, what, what are you doing? Well, wh <laughs> where are you? I'm a fan of the flip phone though, too. I mean, you know, I'm okay with it, but <laughs> the flip phone, I was never able to get the texting right on it. Yeah. It was, it was <laughs> embarrassing really. Um, but I agree with you on, on the tech. And, and I think it's an interesting sort of bellwether is this like, where's Silicon Valley moving? What, what is the Silicon Valley investments? And, and I think right now we are so much in this freight space in the supply chain space um, that yes, it's going to lead to, um, to good things down the line, but also just in general, it's just like, oh, well, if, if they're looking at it, then it's pretty cool all of a sudden. Like I always thought it was cool. You always thought it was cool, but now we finally got um, validation for that, I suppose. Exactly. And there's money, you know I mean? So, mm -hmm. so you know, the, it, there's an argument to be made that the tech is going to follow the money. I mean, when ocean carriers are making as much as Apple, I mean, that's, that's money, you know, like let's, let's, let's hope that the ocean carriers are going to flip that around, reinvest that in the industry because they haven't always had big margins, you know, that for a very long time, this was kind of a no, some, no, no win game. So, so now they are seeing some, some, you know, some profits some benefits, which is, which is good. You know, like it's good to have profit. It's good to have kind of profits coming through in different areas, um, but also make sure that that gets reinvested, make sure that that creates a better 20 years from now. So where it, there's a system in place right now where uh, smaller shippers, are they able to compete or it's, it's still difficult for them to find their pathway? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think it's, it's, it's hard to say. I think right now there's just so much um, tumultuous in, in the industry mm -hmm. that like it's, it's hard to even make generalizations because, you know, I, I feel like day to day it's, it's changing. So, you know, ocean carriers right now, certainly there's, there's kind of the big guys. Um, but that's what the alliances were. They were kind of vessel, vessel sharing so that, you know, if, if you want to kind of combo your cargo on the, on the ship, you know, you can do that. And so it, it provided a, a, it was kind of intended to provide better services, um, you know, and, and it's just the ebb and flow of how it all goes. You know, they're, they're making a ton of money right now, but that's going to go away maybe, you know, at some yeah. point and, and the, the industry will ebb and flow and the profits will move to a different market or section of the market. So um, hopefully, I mean, that's, that's the hope, you know, that, that it kind of moves all around and, um, you gotta, you gotta let the market kind of do what it's going to do right now. It's just up in a certain area and you want to kind of watch them, make sure that they're doing the right thing, you know, yeah. that it's not just like pure profit, but, but yeah, I, I think people can still get into it. You know, maybe it's joining together. I mean, that was, like I said, it was the whole thing of kind of easing capacity strains then. And right, right. Um, so then just last question on that point, because you also do teach. Are you seeing more young people take an interest in this right now? You know, I, I think so. I, I've, I've been reading across the board that they are. Um, so I teach at Roger Williams Law School, uh, Roger Williams University School of Law in Rhode Island. Um, and I teach their Law of the Sea program. So that's kind of like international ocean law. Uh, but I also teach, there's a master's program at Endicott College, um, an MBA, and it's a maritime economics focused MBA. Um, that certainly is getting more attention. You know, those, those types of things, um, because it's, it's kind of a passion industry too. You know I mean? It's kind of cool. Like you either, yes. you either grew up on the water, you didn't for maritime anyways, you grew up on the water, you didn't, but like, there's something about the water, you know, that you kind of like feel pulled to. And, and I think that that's going to, you know, people can get involved with it because they're trying to like chase the, chase the industry right now or, or chase whatever they think is hot. That'll fizzle out. You know, it, it's right. the passion that keeps us all moving forward. It's the passion that, you know, probably got you into doing the podcast. It's the passion that keeps me doing the consulting thing. It's because we want to be part of the conversation because we really truly want to see these industries 
get better. You know, like we're, we're, we either we have a, a personal connection to it or we just really love it. Exactly. Couldn't have said it better myself. Someone wants to get in touch with you. How would they go about doing that? Sure. Um, www.squallstrategies.com. So squall being like a maritime term. <laughs> um, but, but so I do uh, maritime consulting, legal solutions, legal consulting. Um, you know, if, if you have questions about FMC regulation, Federal Maritime Commission regulation, if you have questions about ocean transit, shipping generally, um, maritime regulations, maritime law, I can come in, you know, I can, I can kind of be that expert in the field to, to help your company kind of um, weather your squall, I say, to be super cheesy about it. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> er, puns are intentional here on stream. Perfect. I do perfect. not believe in no pun intended. That is nonsense. Perfect, perfect. Well, www.squallstrategies.com or lbegan, B as in boy, E-A-G-E-N at squallstrategies.com. Lauren, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, really Zach. appreciate it. If you guys like what you, you hear, you know, supply chain logistics, freight, freight tech, all that good stuff, please be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time on stream.